All right, dear future Brandon, when you forget how to do TCP over two PLCs, this is how you do it. It's a whole lot of software. There's nothing in the hardware to do except for the know your IP address of both your PLCs. So here I'm in the OB1 of the first PLC, and the first network I have is just setting true and false, and that's it. The second network is the IP address of the other PLC, so like in this case, 192.168.0.10, and then that's a length of four, of course. And then this is where we define the uh, ID to the PLC to say this connection is going to be ID uh, X of 20. Going down some more, there's the ports of which we're doing this on. Uh, I've chosen port 2000, just pull the port out of the air, and that's 7 DO and hex, so 7 in the first byte and DO in the other byte. So it goes in the TSAP ID, so 7 and DO, and then a length of 2 for that one. This is the remote PC or the other PLC's uh, port. Uh, the same port, 7DO, doesn't matter too. Okay. Uh, PLC type is important. If you're working with a 315 or a 317, you choose a 2 for this. If you're working with a 319, it's a 3. In my case, both of my PLCs are 2s. Moving on, uh, there's only one active side to the connection. Is this side the active side? So in this case, I put true for this one. And then you have the TCON. This is the connection. Uh, function block. And here you have the request. So this is just a manual request I have right here. I right click it and I hit modify to one. So it tries to connect. You of course can try to do some uh, pulsing method to get it to connect if it's not connected. Uh, this is just copied down the ID from up here since we're referencing this uh, connection ID. And then these are the parameters that we're filling in. Uh, all this stuff up here goes into a database I've created called db65dbconparam. So you can see, by the way, since we're here, all the function blocks and databases that are used to create a TCP connection. Uh, there's tsend, treceive, tcon, tdiscon, uh, the connection parameters, uh, and then the instance database for all those FBs. And then I have uh, the data that I'm sending back and forth between the two PLCs. And then I have the UDT here that defines those parameters. And I have a variable table just for watching it. We'll get to that guy later. So anyways, this is the DB for the connection parameters right there. And then specifically drill down to the connection. You can put like that as an option, but it's not going to work. You have to drill down to the connection part itself. All right, so then I just have a bit going off here saying the connection is done. I have a busy, an error, and a status as well to get some extra data if it doesn't work. Uh, and then I have made this little uh, seal in circuit here. So once it's done, it is connected and it seals in. It's connected unless you choose to uh, disconnect it. And it also turns the request off. So that's easy enough. And then the rest is real simple after this. You can either disconnect it, you can send data, or you can receive data. And that's all we got here. So essentially, this is just uh, the bit to request the disconnect. This is the ID specifically. In our case, it was hex of 20. And this is, I'm done. And here's some more information in case it doesn't get done. Uh, the send, very similar. Here's the request to send. Uh, here's the connection ID, again, that hex of 20. We're sending 100 bytes, and this is from that DB uh, for sending the data. So I'll just go ahead and here real quick. All I have is a send of 100 bytes and a receive of 100 bytes. Close that. And so here is his done. Uh, busy information, okay, and then receive, a little different. Uh, this is an enable, so he is enabled if we are connected. Uh, this is the ID that we're looking at, of course, the hex of 20 again. We're looking for a length of 100, and this is where we're going to put our received uh, information. NDR means new data ready, so that means we have received something. Since we're not requesting to receive something, we're always receiving something, and this is that we have received something. Uh, then busy error status and, oh, a length of how much we actually received because we can receive less than 100. There we go. That is that in a nutshell. So we're just going to go online with this guy real quick. We're going to see all this stuff in action. There's not really any action to see up here. We're just pushing parameters. So I'm going to come down here to this guy. And we can see that right now we are not connected. So in the other PLC, I'm going to flip over to that guy. This is all the same stuff, but it's mixed with a whole bunch of uh, safety stuff as well because this is a safety PLC. So if we go to his OB1, 
it's all the exact same code. The only difference is he is looking at a 50, which is our first PLC. This PLC we are on is 192.168.0.10, and he is looking at 50, the other PLC. Uh, in the first PLC, he is 50, and he is looking at 10. So that's, that's our second PLC. So going back to the second PLC, hopefully I didn't make that too confusing. All the same logic going down. The ports are all the same. Uh, I only chose one port, and they can talk together on that port. Uh, he is also a device type of 2. Coming down here, we have turned off his active connection. And the rest of it is the exact same logic. So there we all go. I'm going to view him as well. Now, since he is not the active connection, we're going to want to turn on his request to connect. Hit OK. He's going to be busy. He's going to be requesting and busy until he gets connected from the active connection. We're going to go back to our first guy, one who has the active connection. Go down to our TCON here, and we're going to request that connection. And it happens in like one scan. Uh, see how this didn't come on and nothing happened over here because it did happen and it sealed it in that's why we didn't see it so if we go back to our second plc we can see he got the connection and he is connected very cool so if we want to disconnect this we can disconnect this from either side so we can just say disconnect and that closed the connection here and i can come back up to this side and reopen the connection and there he is he's connected easy peasy so that's the disconnect. Uh, before we go into send and receive, I want to show you if you hit Control D, go Control D. We go up to communication. Uh, down here in connection resources and use, we have one now, and it is the connection between uh, the second PLC and the first. The second PLC will say, "I'm connected at the ID of hex twenty to uh, the other PLC, which is fifty. And I am 10. We're both talking on port 2000. We have not sent or received any bytes yet, though. There we are. So let me show you what that looks like on the other PLC as well. So going back to the first PLC with the active connection, Control D. I'm going to go to communication. Uh, he also has the connection in use here. Uh, he has shown this is an actively established versus the other guy's passive. He's looking at 10, which is the second PLC on ID 20, on port 2000. And this is, since I disconnected, reconnected, this is the number of successful attempts to connect. And we have not passed any bytes yet. Okay, so let's go. So let's pass some bytes now, yeah? So what I want to do is I want to go into my database uh, that has the data. Uh, it's easier, though, to create the VAT table. So that's what I've done here. This VAT table has 10 bytes to send and 10 bytes to receive. So... We're going to send on the first PLC a 1, a 2, and a 3. And we can do a quick view to see all these are zeros currently. So let's modify that to put those into there. And we can view again, and there they are. Very cool. Here's the second PLC. We're going to view this guy, and there's nothing in his bank. Uh, those will appear down here in these three. Let's go ahead and highlight those for his time being. And I'm going to go ahead and hit send from my first PLC, even though it's marked as two, my bad. We're going to modify, and it is done just that quick. I didn't make any bother to make any seal circuit to say it finished, but trust me, it did. Let's hit modify zero. And if we go back to our VAT tables here, now you see, oh, there's nothing there, but let's hit view again and there they are very cool so one two three got sent so in this guy i'm gonna go four five six and i'm gonna hit view again to show those have not moved in move them in with modify and then view that they have moved in okay so there we are so four five six are in this guy and over here we're gonna hit a snapshot again real quick uh in fact you know what? let's just put it on active view we don't have to keep hitting that and so we're just going to hit send on the second PLC to see that the first PLC has received those three bytes. Actually, it's receiving 100, but in this case, I've only changed three. We're going to go to our second PLC, going with the inactive connection or the passive connection. We're going to go down to send. 
are going to right click this dude, hit send. We're going to turn our send off. And we can go back to our first PLC here, and there he is. The 456 is received on the receive side of the first PLC. And that's it. The TCP communication for PLCs is actually very cool and uh, can do more than just PLC to PLC. You can talk to computers or you can talk to other smaller devices that have more information than maybe what you have coming through on your Profinet. Uh, or maybe it's an Ethernet IP device that also talks uh, TCP that you can grab information off of because you're a Profinet PLC. So very cool, very useful. Okay, bye.